in 1840s, we are going to work on steam-powered computer. Wow, no iPad back then. In Ada's dream. And this game is a prototype and we are going to do a few rounds playthrough of it. And hello everyone, I'm Stella. And I'm Taren. From Meeple University. What we're gonna do, we're gonna give you a quick overview of the game and then we're gonna start get into playing it. Just to make, uh, just to show you how it works and probably all gonna make make sense a little bit better once we play it as we explain what we do in the game. Yes, shall we go straight into it? Yeah, let's do it. So we'll get very quickly into uh, trying to play because there's a lot going on and there's a lot to explain at the start of the game if I were to give you everything. So I'm going to give you the quick basics and then we'll explain a lot of the things that will come out as we go along. So each of us is an assistant to Ada Lovelace. And we are trying to build our own little steam-powered computer down here. And at the start of the game, this is at its most empty state. So here, uh, all of these spaces are blocked up by my colored disks. And all of these spaces where dice could go are empty. Uh, if we were to completely fill up our computers, it would kind of look like this by the end of the game. So each space will have a gear in it, which would be a addition, subtraction, or multiplication, and each space would have a die in it. And one of the major ways that you're going to be scoring points in the game is by creating high value equations here. So if you've completely filled a row or column with three dice and two gears, then you would perform that operation and score the points. So this column, for example, would be worth 6 plus 5 plus 3 is 14 points. Uh, this row here, 5 times 6 is 30, minus 1 is 29. However, the whole thing is powered by steam, so each row is limited to the uh, value on your steam track. A row has to be completely filled to score, so if this weren't here, then this whole row wouldn't score at all. Now that's far from the only way to score in the game, but that's a major part of what you're personally building up. How the flow of the game will work is on each turn, you essentially take two actions. We'll call it your first action and second action. The first action is going to be to pick one of the five locations on the main board. If you pick the workshop, you're going to be using that to uh, move dice around and take a die and move that onto your player board. If you take an action turn, you're going to move a die from your player board to your computer, to your mill as it's called in the game, and then you're going to take an action in the matching colored location on the board. That's going to be your first action. It's either workshop to get dice or one of the action turns placing a die. Then you're going to take the second part of your turn, which is optional, and what you can do is do a publish action, which means you pay a book from your supply to do the red colored action on whichever one of the five locations you used in the first part of your turn, or you'll spend that second part building a gear into an empty space in your mill. So in that way, you have to be clearing these disks onto the board because a lot of the actions on the main board involve placing these disks. It's kind of an old school Euro in that way. You're going to be uh, moving stuff from your player board to the main board where it will contribute to like area controls and things like that. And by doing that, you're freeing up space to then build gears. You need to be doing those things in tandem. Uh, there's also some cards, there's decks and hands to manage, and we'll start to see all of that as we go along. The game plays until one player has completely filled up the nine die spaces in their mill, and then you count up all the final scores. Um, as we go along, I think I'll We'll explain what all the various scoring things are as we come to actions that let you set up. Let's do that. But first, let me just acknowledge Steam Powered Computer. Is that even existed? Oh, it would have back in the day. So it's a computer in the mechanical sense. It would do computations and um, you know, come up with mm -hmm. stuff for you. But it turned gears. It had physical stuff. And so the only way to do that back in the day Steam. Uh, is Steam. Wow, and look at this really cute book. It's just like it's just like a, s a small book. It says notes. Yes, so cute. And one more thing I should point out. Actually, two more things. The gear is also really cute. 
uh, let me have a look there here and also this this actually is like a, a punch card these days like the old style punch card yep. that you need to you know when you get into office to work and yep. then you just punch it and out and to run computers most computers <laughs> ran off uh, punch cards and then it'll go here that was the coding like zoink like that that's so cute yep. all right okay all right, so we'll go straight into it. I will be the first player yep. uh, through methods that were determined off screen. Yes, so I have to take a workshop action because I have no dice to take an action turn. So first step of a workshop turn is I choose any die in the wheel and move it one step clockwise. I could pay a coal to move it two steps clockwise. I could pay another coal to change a die up or, up or down by one value. Uh, what I'll do is I'll move this over to here. Second thing that happens is this pushes any equal or lower value die out of this space. It's that push to die, which is the one I'm going to take. I'm going to move that down to there. And I get the benefit that's printed in that cog. So here this is to gain an innovation. So this is my innovation track. I gain one innovation. Then I take the die and put it into my storage space. Now I have the opportunity to play a card from my hand. So we have all these famous mathematicians and patrons in our hands. To play a card from your hand, you can choose any card as long as you meet the die, die number requirements in the top corner. So I could play one of these, which would let me uh, pay, because this was a two, I would pay two coins, two pounds. Well, this one just lets me play it on a one or a two. So I'm going to use this one. I'm going to play that because I Played a two, this can be played on a one or a two, and the effect is that gives me another innovation, and it lets me do a flask action, research actions. So we go down to the Ada's study location, this is where the flask actions occur, and my options here are I could gain an addition gear, I could gain a book, or I could gain an assignment card. And I think I'm going to take an assignment card, so I can choose any one of these four. I'm going to choose the one on the right here. This has a cost of discarding a card from my hand. I will do that. I'll get rid of this one. Then this has benefits on it of gaining a research in purple. So each location has a research track. I'm going to move up one on the purple research track. And this lets me draw two cards from my deck. One, two. It goes into my hand. Because drawing is actually not automatic you have to get an action that lets you draw so drawing is good yes you do uh, that is the case there are certain actions which cost cards and you need to find these other actions that let you draw them then i take this card i add it below the purple slot of my player board so now this will give me a benefit any future time i take a purple die and we replenish the row Okay, so that was the card playing step. The final step is actually to get these benefits for having the cards down below. So I said any future time, because of the uh, order of the turn, I actually get to activate this now. So I took a purple die, I gain another purple research. And then as I move up here, this is going to start to make my purple action stronger. All right, that is my, that's the first part of my turn. Now I can take the second part of my turn, which could be to, uh, well, I can't build a gear at the moment because there's no space on my player board. I'll do the publish action for the workshop. So that's shown up here. That's to increase the amount of steam I'm generating. It's a good early one, I think. So I pay a book to trigger the publish action and I increase my steam. The first step is free. Uh, as I move beyond that, it's gonna cost coal to increase steam, of course. There we go. That is turn number one in the books. My go, I have no choice but to gain a dice. Now, the white one is the wild die, so it can go to, it can activate to any of these four, which we'll show later. But right now, I want to again gain this one. Oh, sorry, I'm going to move this green one here. And equal to lower is this one. So that will give me one brass to my resource area. And I'll take this one, placing it there. So the rest of the action, it's pretty similar to Terran. So I'm going to play the card, and this is this one, so Charles' baggage here. 
With I think it's three. meant to be Babbage. Oh, sorry, Babbage. <laughs> it's, it, it, <laughs> it's does, it does say Babbage. Yes, I know. Uh, I was just like, laugh. Oh, three. And it'll give me this action, which is uh, one, one of these is innovation. And this is a two different bonus on the workshop area. So in this instance, I want to get one brass again and two calls. Now, I'm going to also do this action by paying a book. So I will pay this book here, back to the supply, and on my player board, I'll also increase this. And the first one is free, and that's my turn. My turn. I will move this one to here, and then push this green two down. That's going to give me a research, which I'll use to keep going in on purple research. So I have now made my actions in Ada's mm. study stronger by reaching this first point here. So Very good. good. And I'll take this die and move it to my store. And having played a two, I will play uh, Joseph Marie Jacquard on a two or a three. The effect here is I gain another innovation. I get to change pips on dice uh, by up to two. So as we saw before, for the most part, I'm going to want high numbers to score big over here. The number tends not to matter all that much. Oops. Tends not to matter all that much after the card. So I'm going to turn that two into a four. And I'm going to draw two more cards from my... Now to finish my turn, I can't do a publish action because I have no books and I cannot build a gear because I have no empty spaces for gears. So I, you know, maybe that was inefficient. I waste the second part of my turn. Well, seems okay to me. I'm also going to gain another dice this turn. So I'm gonna move this blue one over here. Whoops, that was fine. I know, <laughs> very excited to gain what I need here. So the bonus is increasing the track, which I'm gonna use it for increasing the this one at the bottom here. Because there are four different ones and I wanna to try to specialize in this. Putting my dice here and I'll play another card, which activates by gaining card, uh, dice number two. And this is to increase my innovation and to gain one of these here, which I will take this one. So it's clearly that Taryn is kind of like focusing on this one and I'm focusing on the other one, orange one. I will put this one here under the orange one, which lets me do research and another research for taking this, uh, for taking orange dice which I am in this turn. So for the card effect, I'll increase Zoing Zoing. And then one more of this track. All of a sudden, I'm, you know, from zero to hero. Very much. Because that actually is the effect of this one. So all up three. And you also can't do the second part of your turn. You have yep. no books no book. and you yeah. have no uh, places to build gears. Correct. All right, time to take action. So I'm going to move this purple to my mill. I'm going to put it in the middle. And the reason I'm going to put it there is I've got a couple of, we both start with a couple of subtraction gears and I want that to kind of be second. If I want to take a big number minus a small number and then maybe multiply. So I'm going to put it in there. This will let me take the purple action down in Ada's study. And that action is shown here. So firstly, I get a punch card. Each of these punch cards has an objective on it worth between six and 12 points. And what will happen, I'll take this punch card, bring it over to my board, put it into one of these six slots. I'll get the benefit printed on the slot and the objective will score if I have three dice in that row or column that meet that objective. So it kind of overlaps with the computer scoring a little bit. So if we look at some of the things I've got here, uh, two green adjacent dice, two blue adjacent dice, all dice green. I already have one green dice, so that might be helpful. Same color dice and all odd values. There's a few different things like this. I'm gonna grab all dice green. I think I can go specializing on green a little bit. Now, obviously I can't place it in either of these columns because I've put a purple there. So let's put it down here. I mean, you can, but you don't want to. 
I don't want to. There are other ways of mitigating that as well. Right, I could, yes. Uh, change the die out later. I'm going to grab two brass for putting it into that bonus. And then we cycle through these quickly. Anytime anyone gets one, uh, we destroy the last card, the last one that's there, and refill two. So we're going to get to see plenty of these, hopefully grabbing the ones we need. Now I get to take two research actions. So normally it would be one, but because of this, I get two. They have to be different. So knowing that I've now committed to doing green, I'm going to grab this card. It works like we had before. So I move up one on the green research track and I draw, I have to discard a card to pay for the cost, first of all. So I do that. And then I draw two cards. So I shuffle my little discard pile here. And I'll refill the, the card market. And the last one here also does get swept out as well. So we get to see plenty of them. And then my second one is to get a book. I need books for publishing actions. So I need to keep a supply of those going. Now, I still can't build a gear. Ada's study, unlike the other locations, doesn't let you get discs out. I could take the publish action here, which would be to pay a book to put one of my discs on top of one of my other discs. I have no other discs. I wouldn't want to do that at this point anyway. Uh, that's really helpful for area controls later on or just for clearing discs to make the space you need. So that is my turn. I... I am rearranging my turn, so instead I was going to do straight on the orange action. So yellow is orange, so yellow is orange, and purple is red, So because this is a prototype. So I'm going to do this one instead. I'm going to just put it right here. I'm now going to use this wild dice as add a study action. So I'm going to get a book. Which is your flask action? Yep which is this one, yep, and then I'm going to gain one of these punch cards. Now, part of the benefit of using the white dice is you can choose whichever action you want. And they are also count as any colours for these punch cards objectives, so that's great. And I also noticed that 12 points, but then the requirement is quite hard. Same colour, dice and odd values. And the easy one to achieve, easier one to achieve was 6 to red adjacent dice, for example. I'm going to get the descending values and I'm going to put it right here. So that will give me the research bonus of the same. I want to put it on the same one also. I want to move this one. So slightly more powerful for myself for this one in the same area. I'm not going to do this action and we're just going to reset this. Yep. Even though you didn't take one of these, we do still reset the last card that's in there. Let's do it. Ooh, ascending values and consecutive values. I'm going to take another workshop action and I'm going to use this effect. So I'm going to pay one coal from my supply to turn this four into a three. I can move it up or down by one. Then I'm going to move this five over here, push this three out. So I get the benefit here of three, money. three pounds. Then I take that die into my store. I can play a card that's triggered by a three. So I'm gonna play Child Babbage, grab myself one of these and two workshop benefits, which will be two coal because I'm now out of coal and one research step. And I'm going to go up on uh, green for that one. And then I get another research step on green. So if we look up at the green area now, I've triggered a better action there as well. I'm not going to take a publish. I still can't build a gear. Got to get some discs on the board for that. It's your turn. I'll play my dice here. I'm going to place it right here. And that is a two. And then for multiplication, it seems weak, but that can be modified later in the game. And I will take this disc and place it in one of these um, area, paying the cost or innovation. Yes, so we're showing the meeting action here. It costs either money or innovation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to place it here, paying three money. So E5, return two. And I'm going to take, I can take this one or this one. I'll take this one because this one looks good. And this lets me draw two cards as well to my hand. So this is also goes to my hand. 
So, drawing two cards. I wish by playing the dice to my board, I am also be able to play cards, and that's not how it works. Mm. Yeah, you do also have to trash a card, remove it from the game. Yep. Uh, your deck is always eight cards, so when you get a better card, you need to get rid of one from your one hand. One card, yeah. You can see that there's end of game points here, while the starting cards, you don't have these, these points. I'm trashing this one away from the game. So bye-bye card. So to reset this area, once again, we keep things quite mm -hmm. fresh. So the last one comes out if it's not taken. Yep. And there's a couple more implications to uh, what you've just done here. So you've gained new cards. You're also starting to build area control in these, the four meeting rooms. So at the end of the game, whoever has the most discs in a given meeting room is going to get the two point tokens as a science token from this stack. And this is for green cards. So you would look through your eight card deck at the end of the game and score two points for every green card you have. Anyone else in that room would get one point per green card. And so there's one of those for each room. And of course the cards that you're taking, you're getting actions that will help you. You're also trying to curate that. Uh, that set of points. All right, then you've got the uh, uh, research <coughs> effect because you've reached the first step. And this lets you play a card without paying its normal cost. So, so this is where I can play the card. I, say, I was saying that when you gain the dice into your board, then you can play the card. But that is an exception which I can play a card here. So the benefit is gaining one of these innovation and gaining one of these cards which I'm going to take. This one is my choice. So this is either yellow or blue, which I'm going to put in blue. And I'm gaining the, um, the action now. So this is to gain one, I have to draw one card to my hand and to increase one of these two. So let me just put it there in my board first. And I choose to increase my research in here. And draw one card to my hand. I'm going to use the top action as my secondary action. Uh, this change good. I feel good about this turn. So paying one book and I'm gaining this one, which I can build to my factory as my second action next turn. So this, this is a multiplier gear. Yep. Actually, I'm, I'm going to choose this one. Three brass and three coal. And this is four brass and two coal. Yes, we haven't gotten to building any of these yet. The subtraction gears are obviously the cheapest and the addition gears have a general cost and they cost mm -hmm. the same. Uh, the multiplier gears, it's they have slightly expensive. different costs and that's why there's a market for them. Yeah. So we uh, refill that market. Here's another one that's mm -hmm. uh, four brass and two mm -hmm. coal. So yes. of course you can get a lot more numbers out of multiplications, so they are much more expensive. And speaking about geese, each of these area has got first in best dress. Points. So this one, disc in three different meeting rooms. Yes, another way of clearing discs and another way of getting points. As you specialize in these areas, uh, the first to achieve something gets yep. some points. Well, I got one out of three. <laughs> my go. I'm going to take a green action. I'm going to put this four here. This was my all dice green row. So that's where my green dice are going to go. And we move up to the institutions. So this is an action that's paid for with innovation. And essentially, I'm putting a disc onto one of these 20 squares. And I will get whatever benefit I cover. There's area control majorities for rows. So whoever has the most discs in a row is going to get these points at the end of the game. And the uh, shared objective up here is to be in three different columns. So that's all of the things we're trying to match here. If I put my disc in the lowest column, it's going to cost me one innovation. The second lowest column will cost me one innovation plus I add an innovation for each row below it that I haven't reached yet. So I could put wherever I want, but it's going to cost me more to go there quickly. I've got a couple of dice, so I'm going to start to work my way. So we'll take a disc and I'm going to start by placing it here in the British government space. Lowest row costs me one innovation. And the effect here is to gain one addition gear. So that's the standard addition gears. They come from A to study, goes into my supply ready to build. Then I've reached this research step here, and this allows me to take one benefit, which is not covered, which is 
below where I currently am in the same column. And uh, I'm on the lowest row, so it's this general benefit down the bottom, which is to gain two pounds and to draw one card into my hand. Now, if I wanted to do the publish action here, it would be to exchange a die from my player board with one from the workshop. So that's a good way of getting low dice in a workshop phase and then switching it out for a six, which is gonna be worth a lot of points in the calculation. Uh, but instead, I'm gonna start building. I wanna get some gears on the board. I finally have a space. So I'm gonna build an addition gear down here. It costs me two brass and one coal. That is the standard cost for an addition gear. I'm starting to compute. That is my turn. You'll go. So I have no other choice but to have to take dice because I have no dice. So uh, this is something new which I'm going to show you. So first, I'm going to empty this space by moving these dice over here. Hence, two things trigger here. I will get this bonus, which is taking two cards from my deck. So I have one card left, which I take into my hand from my deck. And then as Terran did before, just shuffle my current one and just take it to my hand to make it two. Now the empty one gets refilled with three random dice from the bag. Yes, so, we have a die bag. We mm -hmm. didn't show you that before. Yep. Three new dice. And that's how the dice get refilled in this game. So next step, as usual, I will take this one. Now I will spend one call here to turn that into three. And here. So I will then take to my player board. Then I'll gain this action, which I will use to increase this track. Then I'll play this card. Because this will increase another one of these tracks. So the one that I increased before. So then I'll get a bonus, which hopefully we'll be able to show you. And I'll gain a book or do a gear. So I'm going to choose to gain the book now. Yep, the other one lets you build a gear. It's, it's mm -hmm. at its normal cost, but it just gives you that extra opportunity to build a gear. Yep. And this one is actually, let me increase one more of the track. So there you go. It's, it's quick, like when you combo things together, all of a sudden it's quick, like from here to here. And we've seen that before as well. And then I will pay one call to move my steam up here. So the multiplication or whatever result, I can gain up to 20 points if my steam is here. And that is a publish action, so it yep. also costs you a book. Yes, thank you. On this one is worth, well, I have to pay the cost of this one. So this we haven't seen before. So because I took three die, three pip die, and I have to pay three money. Yep. My turn. I'm going to take another green action. So I'm going to put this one here, continuing to work my all green dice row. And then I'll take this disc and I'm going to move it up to this slot here. So Level four will normally cost two innovation, but because there's one empty row between that and my first and my next highest disc, it's going to cost me an extra one. So it's going to cost me all three of my innovation. The benefits on here are one pound, so I'm getting plenty of money to take some actions with, and two different actions down from Ada's study. So I'm going to take another book. Books are very helpful. And I'm going to continue to build up on the green nice. uh, assignment cards. So I'll take that one. It's free. It doesn't cost me a card to discard. Add it to this column. So now I've got two. I'll get two research in green every time. This gives me another research in green. Move up there. Make this stronger. And it gives me one pound and lets me draw a card. Very good. Like so. Then for this benefit, I get one of the benefits from a lower row. I'm going to get another one of these research cards, um, assignment cards, sorry. So I'm going to get this bonus here. It's three pounds. Nice. So I'm getting very wealthy now. And I, I'm going to, I don't really need to draw cards at the moment. I've got most of my deck in my hand. So I'm going to grab this one, this purple card. That's going to give me a purple research and a brass and a coal. Nice, I'll reset this. So one brass, one coal. Now I'm going to use the institution's pub publish action. So I spend a book 
And that's going to let me swap a die from my workshop with one from the board. Very good. So I'll take this purple two and swap it out with something that'll be a little more high scoring, this blue six. Nice. And it's your turn. I'm going to use these three die, which I will place here. Actually, I will place it. Yeah, I'm going to place it here to do the travel action. So this is how it works. I will pay one pound to move here. Yep, you can move as far as you want, but yep. the travel cost is based on how far and what sorts of transport. Just here, so one pound and then rails two, and then what is this? Ferries. Plane ferries. ferries is four. So cheap travel to get there, which I will gain the benefit quickly first. So three brass and two innovation. Is this one? I'm almost at the top, so I can spend this or I can leave it here. I can push it up and then gain points at the end of the game. Then I'll take my disc and I will put it on this area. So what happened here, if another, if my opponent putting their disc here when they fish it here, I'll get two points. So hopefully Terran, come here, come to Oxford, you can study here. More of a Cambridge man. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, so each of these discs is worth, each city's worth the mm -hmm. points shown here, yep. plus two for every disc placed on top of yours. Yes, so after that, I'll... I'm activating this, which gives me a bonus, oh, sorry, a bonus movement for free to a small city. So, doink. And the bonus here is two, two coals. Points. And that doesn't actually let me put in this there. So, back on my board, my secondary action, I will choose to build this multiplication gear. So, it costs three brass and three coal, which I now have conveniently. So I just got it and I will build this one here. Okay. So whatever I'll put in there and then plus or minus or plus here times whatever I put in here. Yeah. So a plus is more than likely to be exactly what you need there. It would yeah. be three plus two times. Hopefully you can get a six in there. Yeah. Push hopefully. your steam up and that could be a 30 point row. Which mm. Uh, take some effort to get there, but it's a big chunk of points. Yeah, that's my turn. And that's where we'll stop for this one round playthrough. So you've seen the actions in all of the major locations on yep. the board. The game goes through this cycle of taking dice from the workshop, moving them to your computer, and trying to clear out as many discs as you can so you've got space to build these gears. Uh, you will likely get only 18 or 19 turns across the game because it will end as soon as someone has put nine dice into the mill. And so you really need to use these actions to their best abilities. Uh, you'll see a lot of them get a whole lot stronger the further you go. There's a lot of really great actions up here in the Scottish universities, up here at the top level of the institution. We alluded to it without getting to it, but there's seven points or three, seven points for being first or three points otherwise for generalizing across these actions so three yes. different meeting rooms three different columns uh, getting something in south england north england scotland and this one's about building addition gears and these cards are layered as well later on we'll come up the level two which is more powerful and gets more points yes the only thing we didn't see from a scoring standpoint is if you can get to the top of a research track you will gain this bonus here this will trigger off how many of these cards you have. So you can, this one, for example, is purple. If I get to the top of the purple research track first, it'll be two points, otherwise one point for every one of these purple cards that I've got. And that's kind of self-fulfilling because the more of these that you get, the more quickly you move up the matching mm. research track. So there can be some good points in that as well. Uh, we are using the prototype board and components here once again. So colors will change a little bit. Everything is also pre-printed, so all these university tiles, all these, there's various bonuses that will get mixed up uh, and randomized as you get the full game and, and play it multiple times. Yes, and I admit, probably takes me the second, at least the second play to start understanding how things work, how things are interconnected. So as you said earlier about the, uh, the older style Euro game, it's not a bad thing. It's something that you probably enjoy if you 
like that sort of games that interconnecting like when to do this at what time uh, and so you're solving your own puzzle in that way while looking at your opponents to see what they're doing if the cards that you want to get snatched or not and see how progressed they are in the board and so on yeah and try not to leave good benefits for players up for on this the workshop. One, I know. I left you. I left a lone six. It's very yeah. easy to move a lone six. Yeah. And uh, scoop yeah, up the, the secondary one. benefit there. Yeah. So that is our playthrough, or few rounds playthrough of Adder's Dream. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit the like button and ask us in the comments if you have any questions. Check out the project page if you like. And hopefully you have a great day. See you next time.